Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. A special word of welcome to our visitors here today. I'm looking around and seeing some familiar faces from the wedding yesterday, so welcome back to the uh, wedding folks. Uh, we celebrated the wedding of Justin and Abby yesterday, and now this morning we celebrate their baptism later in the service. So lots to be celebrating today. We will also be uh, commissioning Lori Johnson as our visitation pastor, taking a moment to usher her into that work through some word and prayer. So lots going on here this morning. Glad that you're here to share in it. We begin our worship by telling the truth about ourselves, uh, confessing our sin, and also hearing the greater truth of God's forgiveness. I invite you to stand as you're able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. Dear friends, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will to all. Let us pray. Beloved God, from you come all things that are good. Lead us by the inspiration of your spirit to know those things that are right and by your merciful guidance help us to do them. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 5. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I expected it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, but saw bloodshed. Righteousness, but heard a cry. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Philippians chapter 3. Paul writes, If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet, whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus is my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes 
through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please stand. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Glory Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to the people, Listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his produce. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore I tell you the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. This time I'd like to invite the children up front for children's time. The rest of us will sing. girls welcome to worship today i'm so glad that you're here and thanks for coming up for the message too as you can see i'm holding a little bowl of uh, grapes i brought some grapes in today do you guys like grapes these ones are really good they're sweet and they're nice and crisp Um, they're not in season so they're super expensive when i went to get yesterday i was surprised (laughs) but uh, i really wanted to share some grapes do you guys like grapes you want to have some you can go ahead and have some take a take a grape you know who else likes grapes 
God likes grapes. We hear in our first reading for today this uh, beautiful, you could call it a poem of sorts, uh, in Isaiah, where God is talking about having a vineyard, and God tends to this vineyard, he cultivates this vineyard so that he could have some grapes, because he loves to have the, that good fruit from those grapes. Uh, but he goes in to, get the, uh, to get the grapes, and he finds they're all wild grapes, which means they're the sour, yucky grapes. I know you two are farm girls. You know the difference between field corn and sweet corn. Big difference. You don't want to accidentally bite into some field corn. So it's like that. The wild grapes are the yucky grapes. And uh, what God is talking about here in this poem, in the first reading from Isaiah, is not really about a vineyard, a place where grapes are grown. Really, he's talking about people. And he's not really talking about grapes like these. He's actually talking about what we might call the fruits of faith or the fruits of the kingdom, or we might call them the fruits of the spirit. God's people were not producing those good fruits that God wants to see, those fruits that come out of us because we believe and trust him. God wasn't seeing those fruits. And we can hear in that first reading how God's very disappointed, even God sounds kind of angry in that first reading about all of that. But by the time we get to our gospel reading, we hear what God has ultimately done about this vineyard that isn't producing the good fruit. God has sent his son to us. And Jesus died and rose again for us so that we would have a new life, a new life where we would start to grow these fruits that God likes to see. In another place, it's not in our readings for today, but in another place, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. So when we're plugged into him, when we trust in what he's done for us, when we have faith in Jesus, we're connected to him. And as we're connected to him, God starts to grow the good fruit that God likes. Fruits like love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity and self-control. We call those the fruits of the Spirit. And that's what God grows in us through his Son. Let's pray. Lord God, you see among your people that uh, we sometimes don't produce the fruit that you like to see. And so we pray today that you would reconnect us through your word, through your supper, through your presence with us here today. Reconnect us to Jesus, your son. Let him be the vine and us be his branches, uh, that we might produce the good fruits that you like to see in our lives. We ask it all in his name. Amen. Thanks for coming up, you guys. <laughs> Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It has been said that one man's trash can be another man's treasure. Every so often you see this literally become true. There's a popular PBS program called Antiques Roadshow where people bring in the junky things that they find in a box in the basement and they bring it into these experts and sometimes they find that that junk is very, very valuable. Sometimes you hear stories of people buying things at a garage sale for just a couple of dollars and then they turn out to be worth millions. I recently read an article about someone who bought a bowl at a yard sale in New York for $3.00. It turned out that this was an ancient ceramic bowl from the Song Dynasty in China from the year 967 AD. There's only one other bowl of this type known to be in existence and is at the British Museum in London. This precious bowl that had been cast aside, put out of the house, relegated to the front yard to be sold alongside a bunch of other junk, went to auction at Sotheby's and sold for $2.2 million. The name of the family in New York who sold the bowl for $3 was not made public. <laughs> One man's trash can become another person's treasure. A similar principle can be found in Psalm 118, which we hear Jesus quote in our gospel reading for today, when he says, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, Jesus says, and it is amazing in our eyes. Quoting from Psalm 118. In quoting this psalm, Jesus was talking about himself. 
Like the prophets before him, Jesus was being rejected by the chief priests and the elders and the Pharisees. We've been hearing about this week after week now as we've been dwelling in Matthew chapter 21. And this stone that the builders rejected would become the cornerstone. It would become the rock of our salvation. What was treated as trash, cast aside, rejected, dragged outside of the city gates and dumped, would become a precious treasure to many. To illustrate this, Jesus tells yet another parable about a vineyard. He builds very much on our Isaiah reading from this morning. He tells the story of a landowner who kept on sending his slaves to his tenants, caring for the vineyard so that they can collect the produce. But again and again, the tenants reject the slaves. They beat one, they kill another, they stone another. Until finally the landowner sends his son into the vineyard. The tenants seize the son, they reject him, they throw him outside of the vineyard, and they kill him. This parable is an allegory. Not all of Jesus' parables are allegories, but this one very much functions as an allegory. God is the landowner. The religious leaders are the tenants who are charged with tending to the vineyard, cultivating that good fruit. The slaves are the prophets whom God sent again and again to call his people to faithfulness and to righteousness. And again and again, those prophets were rejected and beaten and killed. As Jesus would lament, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that stones the prophets and kills those whom God sent you. Well, the landowner's son in this allegory, of course, you probably already figured it out, The landowner's son is Jesus. Even God's own son would be rejected. With this parable, Jesus is holding a mirror up to the chief priests and the Pharisees and the elders who are rejecting him. He lays out this parable, which so far is going right over their heads as an allegory. And after he tells this parable, he asks them, what do you think the landowner will do to those tenants? And the chief priests and the Pharisees self-righteously answer, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and give the vineyard to other tenants. Now note here that this was their suggestion. This is not coming from the landowner. This is what the chief priests and the Pharisees are recommending here. They don't even realize it yet, but they have just convicted themselves. They are the tenants in the parable. In their rejection of Jesus, they were repeating this pattern of God's people rejecting those whom God sent to them. Only now, it was God's son. They eventually realized that he was speaking about them. But this realization did not stop them from carrying out their role in the allegory. Everything foreshadowed in the parable came to pass. God's son was indeed taken out of the vineyard, outside of the city gates, and he was killed. But what was treated as trash became a great treasure. For the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The cornerstone was the most important part of any building in the ancient world. It's not so much that today. They're usually mostly ceremonial. On certain buildings, you'll see a little plaque with the date of construction, maybe the names of the builders on it. We have a sort of a cornerstone over just outside of the the fellowship hall. It's not holding anything up or uh, anything structurally important, but it's a symbolic uh, cornerstone. But in the ancient world, the cornerstone was the most important part structurally of every building. Everything was measured and determined by the cornerstone. So it had to be perfectly level. Its lines had to be perfectly straight. If it was crooked or wobbly or off-center, the entire rest of the building would be too. And so the cornerstone kept everything aligned. It kept everything in right relationship. In rejecting Jesus, 
by tossing him out of the vineyard and putting him on the cross, the chief priests and the Pharisees had unwittingly facilitated the means by which we are brought into right relationship with God. The cross is our cornerstone. The cross is the rock of our salvation. Through the cross we have forgiveness, we have a new life with God that begins now and continues forever, and so it is the foundation on which God's kingdom is built. The, stones that the, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. What was treated as trash will become a treasure to many, many people. We live in a time when more and more people are rejecting God's Son. In our society today, more and more people are seeing the cross as old and junky and worthless, something to be rid of. We see it in the long, steady decline of mainline Christian churches. We see it in the more recent deconstructing movement in evangelicalism. We see it in the astonishing growth of the number of people who identify as agnostics or atheists or who check none of the above in the religious surveys. That none of the above, that's the fastest growing group in our country right now when it comes to religious identification. We see it in the number of people who still identify as Christians but who have become apathetic about coming into Christ's presence in worship or participating in the life of the church in any meaningful way. God's Son continues to be seen by many people as not worth very much. But what is one person's trash is another's treasure. What many have cast aside we see as precious, infinite in worth. Through faith we are given eyes to see Christ and his cross as something valuable beyond all measure. Maybe you have perceived this treasure your whole life, or, or maybe the good Lord is helping you to see it anew, or even for the first time today. But what Christ Jesus has done for us through his death and resurrection is amazing in our eyes. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone for us. With the cross as the cornerstone of our lives, we are brought into right relationship with God. With the cross as our cornerstone, we are brought into alignment with God such that we begin to bear the fruits of faith. With the cross as our cornerstone, we have a rock of forgiveness and life and salvation on which we can stand firm in joy and in hope and in peace. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want you to stand now as you're able as we sing.
now pray for the church, the world, and for all people in any need. Please join me now in prayer. Holy and gracious God, we pray for your church. Build it up on the cornerstone of Christ and make it abound with the fruits of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. Creator God, we pray for your world. Raise up leaders and peoples in every land who will pursue both justice and righteousness in accordance with your will. Lord, in your mercy. We pray today for the people of today's Israel who suffered a horrific attack yesterday. Hasten the day when bloodshed in every land will come to an end and there will be peace. Lord, in your mercy. Tend to all who are hurting in any way, O Lord. Restore them through your loving care. Lord, in your mercy. Giver of life, we lift up to you those in our congregation who are celebrating birthdays this week, including Andy Favor, Debbie Reitz, Salvador Carvalho, Patty Bruland, and Molly Jones. As these friends mark their milestones, fill them with the deep joy found in the saving love of your Son. Lord, in your mercy. God of steadfast love, in keeping with your word, we honor those couples in our congregation who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, including Louis and Moira Bartrand, Steve and Martha Ellis, Ron and Shelley Muzal, and Matt and Shannon Ackerman. We pray also today for Justin and Abby Campbell, who were joined to each other in marriage here yesterday and will be joined eternally to you in holy baptism today. Let the love of each of these couples be a reflection of Christ's great love for his bride, the church. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, we pray for all whom you've gathered here this day. Open the eyes of all to perceive the treasures you have won for us through the cross. Empower each of us to make you the cornerstone of our lives, that we would be aligned with your will and in right relationship with you and with one another. Lord, in your mercy, we lift up our prayers to you, O God, trusting your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please be seated. As we continue now, I'd like to invite Justin and Abby up to the baptismal font and Amy as well, who will be um, their sponsor. And come around just to the side here. (laughs) Amy could be over here. I guess we'll be over here. That'd be great. (coughs) Just by way of introduction, uh, Justin and Abby have been worshiping with us for several weeks now. They came to me months ago to talk about having a wedding here. Um, Justin and Abby came to our church uh, pre-COVID, right? Uh, for Munchie Monday. And so they were familiar with our church uh, visiting here for Munchie Monday. Uh, They graduated the same year my oldest son Luke did, uh, which made doing their wedding an absolute thrill and a joy and also kind of terrifying for me. (laughs) But but anyway, uh, so Amy, I kind of knew Annie, Abby's mom, through uh, senior night stuff for for Luke's graduating class. So we already had kind of a connection with their family that way. And it's just been a joy for me to get to know Justin and Abby. And as we were going through premarital counseling um, that eventually became pre-baptism counseling as we were talking more and more about issues of faith. So yesterday was the wedding and I said, would it be crazy to do the baptism the day after? And they're like, no, we'll be here. Let's do it. <laughs> so um, they got married here yesterday and they're being baptized here today. And how about it? Um, your high school librarian is now your godmother. Did you ever imagine <laughs> that, that would be the case? <laughs> All right. So thanks, Amy, for stepping into that role. As we begin uh, the baptism, we are reminded of what God is up to in this sacrament. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Your grandmother has her, or godmother has her first line. God. Justin and Abby, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to be baptized into Christ? 
Amy, do you promise to nurture Justin and Abby in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help them to live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? People of God, do you promise to support Justin and Abby and pray for them in their new life in Christ? If so, please say, we do. We do. That was good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Justin and Abby, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and to confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? I invite the congregation to stand as we join Justin and Abby in confessing our faith together. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and descended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death and raise us up to live in you. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation can be seated. Let's have you switch sides here. Most your people are over here. Amy, do you want to come over here, please? I don't need that right now, but I'm going to keep that. Keep, you'll, you'll need those first. All right, Justin, let's start with you. We'll lean over, get your face in there. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Douglas Campbell, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Who's that? Abby? Abigail Rianne Campbell, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. You cleanse them from sin, and you raise them to eternal life. Abby? Sustain Abby with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Abby, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You guys switch spots now. There you go. Sustain Justin with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Justin, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. The candles? Don't need to do one? All right. I'll let you say it.
Through holy baptism, God has made this new sister and brother members of the priesthood we all share in Christ Jesus, that we may proclaim the praise of God and bear his creative and redeeming word to all the world. On the screen, we will see some words of welcome. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as fellow members of the body of Christ, children of the same Heavenly Father, and workers with us in the kingdom of God. Let's give them a round of applause. Please stand. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace with one another. Everybody wants to greet the happy couple. We can do that after. If you, if you didn't get your chance, we'll have a chance after worship. A few announcements to highlight for you this morning. Um, coming up on uh, Tuesday of this week, we have our men's lunch and Bible study at noon. All men are invited to join us for that. Just bring your Bibles. You don't need to bring anything else. Uh, the food will be provided by the gentleman who signed up to host for this week. So thanks to those guys. Um, Tuesday, men's lunch at noon. Wednesday, if you missed our adult ed class this morning, which is about Holy Communion, uh, it is offered again on Wednesday night at 7, so you can join us down in the church library at 7 on Wednesday night to learn more about Communion. Thursday, we have a council meeting, so all council members, please note that we're up this Thursday for our next meeting, and please note we have bumped this up to 6.30, so we're meeting a little bit earlier than we have in the past, so 6.30 on Thursday for that. On Friday, we have a high school football game, and we are going to partner once again with Young Life to offer a tailgate party before the game. So we'll meet out here on the grass over by the picnic tables here um, at 5.30. Uh, we'll be there until about 6.30, 6.45. The game starts at 7. Come and get free hot dogs and chips and pop uh, before the football game. We'll be doing this this Friday and the following Friday. Those are their last um, two home football games. So Friday night tailgate party in the parking lot here starting at 4, 5.30. Uh, free hot dogs and other uh, snacks and stuff. On Saturday, we will be having our um, celebration of life for Karen Peterson. Uh, we had a nice gathering yesterday with uh, Pete and his immediate family uh, where we laid Karen to rest at a beautiful spot at Sunnyside. Just a gorgeous day and a gorgeous spot and I think a meaningful time for them. Uh, it'll be time for all of us to say our goodbyes and to give thanks for, for Karen Peterson and to celebrate the resurrection uh, next Saturday at 10 a.m. So you're all invited to join us for that. Next Sunday, we have our annual outing as a congregation to the farm stand, also known as K&R Farms, out there at Douala Bay. Uh, we'll be gathering there at 2 o'clock, and um, it's just kind of loose and, and uh, unstructured, but we just meet at 2, and there's ice cream there and other treats. You can get your pumpkin if you want. There's corn maze and games and stuff, a lot of great photo ops with the new sunflower field that's there. Um, so that's next Sunday at 2, so you're invited to join us there um, then. 
The insert has more announcements for you to look at uh, in the schedule for the week ahead. The connection card, as I mentioned last week, has some sign-ups for our chili feed, which is coming up the last Sunday in October, which is Reformation Sunday. After this uh, 1030 service, we're going to be having our chili cook-off. Uh, we had a lot of people sign up for different things last week and um, looking for a few more to fill out our tables a little bit. So take a look at that and see if you couldn't bring something on October 29th. That will also be a free will offering to help with organ repairs, that organ uh, over there. So just don't want it, you can be confused about other organs there might be. Um, so anyway, that's coming up. Uh, please, uh, if you're a visitor today, the connection card is also your place to uh, give us whatever contact information you're comfortable sharing with us that we might make a further contact with you. Uh, you can put those in the offering plate when they come around here shortly. But first, let me switch mics. We have another uh, thing to celebrate today. I'd like to invite Pastor Lori Johnson forward. Lori Johnson formerly served here at Oak Harbor Lutheran Church as an associate pastor. She has recently come back to the island, and her full-time gig is at uh, Whidbey Health, where she coordinates hospice care. Uh, but she came to us recently and said, I have some hours uh, each month. Uh, to be able to give to some visitation ministry. And that has been a need in our congregation, so we uh, jumped right at that. It was a great opportunity for both of us. And as she enters into this new position, which will be 10 to 15 hours a month or so, depending on her availability and our needs, about 10 to 15 um, hours a month. Uh, it'll fluctuate from month to month, I suppose. Um, uh, and she will primarily be focusing on those who are sick and homebound and hospitalized. Uh, but as she takes up this ministry among us this month, we wanted to surround that with word and with prayer. So a couple of passages I picked for this occasion. The first comes from James. James writes, Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And a reading from Romans 10. St. Paul writes, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Pastor Lori, you have been called among us to provide visitation ministry to the members of this congregation. Will you bring the good news of Christ Jesus to those who are sick, homebound, or hospitalized, praying for them and providing pastoral care, that they would know his presence and his peace? If so, please respond with, I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. I will, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, will you receive Pastor Lori as a servant of Christ Jesus as she brings you his gifts, given through word and sacrament, prayer and consolation? If so, please say, we will. We Let us pray. Lord God, we give you thanks for Pastor Lori, for her availability and her eagerness to once again serve your people here by providing visitation ministry. Guide her feet to those who need you most. Use her keen mind and her compassionate spirit to deliver your gospel to those among us who are hurting or lonely. Let her be received with gratitude as a bearer of the good news of your salvation. We ask it in the name of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I guess I should say welcome back, Pastor Lori. <laughs> good to have you with us. Yes. And we continue with some special music.
Our worship continues now with the offering. stand. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opens to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Dear friends, on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Let us now pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus comes to us now through bread and wine. Come and receive the treasures he has to give you. Please be seated. I know we have a lot of visitors here today, so I want to make clear that you understand that we do not see this as the table of Oak Harbor Lutheran Church or even the table of the Lutheran Church. This is the Lord Jesus table, and so we invite all Christians to join us in this meal where he is truly present for us for the forgiveness of our sin. Let us share together in the supper of our Lord, preparing to do so by singing the Lamb of God.
Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in his grace this day and always. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You're all invited to join us for a reception next door in the Fellowship Hall. I know today is actually Lewis and Moyer of Bartrand's anniversary, and it's 60-something, isn't it? What is it? 68 years. What? Wedding anniversary today. Yeah. So we have a cake in celebration of your anniversary today. Also, today is also Steve and Martha Ellis's anniversary. Looks like they slipped out. Those buggers. Uh, today, <laughs> they must have somewhere to be to celebrate, but it's their wedding anniversary today as well. And of course, you can greet our, the newest members of our congregation, Justin and Abby Campbell as well. So do stick around and mingle over some cake and other refreshments next door. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.